flit free mutation are um, late mutations in the clonal development of acute myeloid leukemia. They do not occur at the beginning of the disease, but later on. But if flit free mutations occur, they induce a very rapid proliferation. And this is really indicated by a high white blood cell count and high bone marrow blast count in patients with activating flit free mutations. Flit free mutations are type 1 mutation. They induce proliferation and the stop of differentiation. And uh, flit free mutation can be distinguished in two broad groups. The first group is internal tandem duplications, which, which occur in the juxta membrane domain, but also in the thyrosine, uh, thyrosine kinase domain 1. Uh, and this can be uh, distinguished from um, point mutations, and these occur in the thyrosine, uh, thyrosine, thyrosine kinase domain, um, which are point mutations, and the modes most common is the 835 mutation. If flat free mutations occur, they introduce an uh, enormous proliter pro proliferative signal in the cell, and this we see clinically. Uh, by a high white blood cell count and a high blast count. And um, these mutations also induce a block in differentiation. However, the most important thing is this proliferation. And uh, this is important to be identified early during the disease course with, because otherwise patients have a very dismal prognosis if treated too late. Flat free inhibitors has been introduced in the treatment of acute myeloid leukemia. It's now, I think, 20 years ago. Uh, and their first um, multi kinase inhibitors came up, uh, such as mitostorin and sorafenib. And they have been tested um, in 2008 um, in a double blinded randomized study for mitostorin. And also, uh, sorafenib has been tested in a double-blinded randomized study. These are multi-kinase inhibitors, uh, which are not uh, very specific for FLT3, but they also inhibit FLT3. Later on, um, there were second-generation inhibitors came up, such as uh, quisartinib, uh, gilteritinib, and granonolib. Uh, these are the inhibitors which are now in the clinical development in phase one, and they move now to phase three studies. And there are two types of inhibitors in uh, the second generation inhibitors. These are type one, um, and these are gilterapinib and granonolib. They inhibit uh, the active, but also the inactive lit free um, receptor kinase. Whereas the type 2 inhibitor, this is uh, quisartinib, this only inhibits the uh, inactive form of flit free. The second generation uh, inhibitors, they differ in uh, half life. And this is quite important because, for example, quisartinib and um, gilteritinib, they have to be applied only once daily, whereas uh, granonolib has been uh, to be applied three times daily. So you see there is a, late, a great difference in half-life, and there are some advantages for quisartinib and gilteritinib in that it has to be taken only once. However, if um, as we already see in acute myeloid leukemia patients clinical problems. Granonolib may be preferable because it can be uh, easily um, put off and the half-life is very short and the effect of the drug is um, very limited in time.